Hey guys, it's Venom coming at you with another build video. Today we're going to be talking about a one bar Templar PvP build called Penetrator. We're going to start first with our gear sets. We have Tarnished Nightmare for the weapon, Sharpened Trait, Lightning Staff, Disease Damage Enchantment. Two, three, and four piece gets 657 critical chance. The five piece, when you deal critical damage to an enemy, glass shards burst eight meters around them, dealing 6405 physical damage to enemies in the burst. And apply the Sundered status effect. Can occur every 8 seconds, scaling off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. For the head is a heavy Valken Scoria. This gives 1487 offensive penetration. We have Tarnished On for the chest. The other set is Shattered Fate. This is a craftable set. The 5 piece gives 7918 offensive penetration. We are all max magic enchantments. I run all divines on my gear. If you guys need to switch it up, if you need more critical resistance, you can change your traits, whatever you need, put on end pin. But for me, I just try to go all damage. We have weapon and spell damage enchantments for all of our jewelry, bloodthirsty for the traits. Our mythic is Oak and Soul. While equipped, you're unable to swap between your primary and backup weapon sets. You gain Minor Berserk, Minor Courage, Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, Major Savagery, Minor Force, Minor Protection, Major Resolve, Minor Mending, Minor Fortitude, Minor Intellect, Minor Endurance, Minor Heroism, Minor Slayer, Minor Aegis, and Empower. Take a look at our character sheet. Our base stats, we have 22,565 penetration this will actually go up to 31,487 our max magic is over 31,000 max health almost 23,000 over 13,000 stamina health recovery is 2636 mag recovery over 1200 stamina recovery 612 our spell damage is 4454 that will go up to about 49 Spell crits 37%, and physical and spell re penetrate or resistances is 22365 and 18735. Those will also go up as well. We have 64 points into our attributes for, for Magicka. I'm running Clockwork Citrus Filet. This gives max health, health recovery, max Magicka, and mag recovery. If you want to run different food, by all means, go for it. Sometimes uh, Witch Mother's Potent Brew is another good choice. It's cheaper to run, though not as good as Clockwork, but it's pretty close. These buffs down through here are mostly covered from Oak and Soul. We are running the Lover of Mundus. This gives another 4,489 penetration. Let's take a look at some of our skills. I switch these up depending on what I'm doing. This is my kind of basic layout. Uh, we have Living Dark. This is going to envelop yourself in Lightless Sphere for 12 seconds to protect yourself anytime you take damage. The Sphere lashes back at the attacker, reducing the movement speed 40% for 3 seconds. It will heal you for 2,273 health. This can occur every half second. Your Javelin, you're going to hurl the Spear at an enemy with Godlike Strength dealing 6132 magic damage. You knock them back 8 meters. It ignores the enemy's resistances and cannot be blocked. The spear deals an additional 2% damage for every 1 meter you're away from your target, up to a maximum of 40%. Radiant Oppression is your execute. Burn an enemy with a ray of holy fire, dealing 14,427 magic damage over 1.8 seconds. It deals up to 500% more damage to enemies below 50% health. Elemental Susceptibility, this is going to apply a major breach to your target. It's going to lower their physical and spell resistance by 5,948. Every 7.5 seconds, the enemy is afflicted with burning, chilled, and concussion status effect. You can run this as a spammable. It does damage every 7.5 seconds. But if you just reapply it, it's a free cast, by the way. It just keeps dealing damage. You can shorten the duration. Uh, this is your Burst Heal Ritual of Rebirth. Focus to Spiritual Devotion, healing you and nearby allies for 9,941 health. 
you heal a single ally outside the abilities radius for additional 10,269 health. The ultimate, sometimes I do change this up depending on what I'm doing. But this is a good ranged ultimate to run. I run Ice Comet. You call down a Comet from the Constellations, the Blast Enemy, dealing 19,678 frost damage to all enemies in the area, knocking them down, stunning them for two seconds. Reduce their movement speed 50% for six seconds. After the impact, enemies in the target area take 5,332 frost damage every one second for 13 seconds. Just make sure that you guys have all your passives that you need. You want to make sure you get all of these. There are different skills that you can swap out, again, depending on what you want to do. These are very good choices. The Templar has a lot of very good skills that he can use. Uh, Crescent Sweep is a good ultimate if you're up close. It's not going to do you any good, obviously, at range. It's, it's got a, a radius of just 8 meters. Puncturing Sweep. Again, you got to be close for this to work, but this is, if you are close, this is a very good skill to run. This will also give you a heal. It heals you for 36% of the damage done. This is our Javelin Toplin Charge. I do swap out uh, the Javelin sometimes for Toplin Charge. If I'm doing just ground and pound, um, enemies are not, you know, up on the key if I'm trying to attack them from... Either I'm up on the keep or they're up on the keep or whatever. If we're down on the ground, then I will switch over to Toplin Charge and run in and try to get a stun on these people and, and burst them down that way. So this is a... I, I interchange this with Javelin quite a bit. It deals the same damage, 6132. Magic damage, you gaining major protection for 4 seconds. You reduce your damage taken by 10%. Enemies hit or stunned for 3 seconds. Set off balance if they're cast and they're interrupted. Uh, the ward, sometimes this, this could be pretty good, and you can use this as a spammable attack if you have a lot of enemies around you. Um, surround yourself with rays with solar rays, granting a damage shield that absorbs 68, 96 damage, 6 seconds. Scales off your max health. Nearby enemies take 74, 21 magic damage when the shield is activated. Each enemy hit increases the shield strength by 20%. So if you're wanting to be more survivable and have a spammable that's dealing damage, you can run in basically using your ward as a spammable if there's a lot of enemies close to you. Underneath Dawn's Wrath, the ultimate here can be used. This is an okay choice. I prefer Meteor, but if you want more of a, a larger radius, you got an 8 meter radius with this thing. It lasts 10 seconds, deals magic damage. Uh, the synergy, if an ally, you know, will go up and, and use your synergy. You can do gravity crush. It deals 22,207 magic damage. This can be useful when people are trying to, like, siege. If you're up on top of the keep and they're down on the ram. If somebody can activate the synergy, it's if. But it, it's an okay choice. Reflective light. Like I said, he's got so many skills. He's got so many skills, guys. If you all want to swap these things up. You can. Purifying Light is a good choice. Um, this right here is also going to give you your passive. It's going to activate it. The same as Living Dark. The, one of the main reasons that I like Living Dark, not only is it defensive and it deals damage back to anybody that's attacking you and slows them, but you can use it as a pre-buff to activate your passive. You don't have to actually hit your target and alert them, hey, damage is coming. You can pre-buff with Living Dark and then try to burst them down. But with Purifying Light, if you're trying to use that to get your buff up, um, they're, they're going to know it's coming. You know, They're probably going to block your, your Meteor and all that in advance. So make sure that you grab all of your passes. Extended Ritual is another good choice if you're wanting a heal over time. This puts a a 12 meter radius on the ground last 30 seconds you will cleanse up to five harmful effects from yourself immediately uh, you will heal nearby allies for 3212 health every two seconds for 30 seconds and your allies can activate a purifying synergy cleansing all harmful effects from themselves and healing for 7270 destruction staff you can run Crushing Shock as your Spamble if you want to attack. It deals decent damage. It's 
grab your passes for your destruction staff. We're running five light, one heavy, one medium. So just make sure you grab your passes for your armor. I am running the Mages Guild, so I do have the Ice Comet and all the passes for it. For the Undaunted, I got the 6% bonus going on for it because we're five light, one heavy, one medium. Salt and support, make sure you grab your passes for it. I am a high elf, whatever race you are, it'll work just fine. I prefer the high elf, I, it does more overall damage. So let's show you something here for the living dark. Whenever you hit this, it's going to activate your passives and it's going to raise your spell damage up to 4802. If you activate your set and now you're up to 4940. With your defensive pot on, that raises your resistances to 27 and 24,000. For my wheel, I have defensive pots, immovability with stealth detection, invisibility with major expedition, and tripods. Alright, so about our spell penetration being able to get up to 31,000, we have 22,565 base penetration. When you add elemental susceptibility, that's 5948 plus when tarnished procs, which also puts minor breach, which is another 2,974, you end up with 31,487 penetration. So when you guys are out there roaming around and you're running into these really tanky people and you're like, good grief, man, they get like, <laughs> who knows how much resistance. This is going to allow you to finally get through these really tanky people. You want to make sure that you have an ability to stun them. If you can catch them just right with your toppling charge or your spear, then you can burst them down. Keep in mind, too, that whenever you're lowering a person's resistance, you're using the elemental susceptibility, which is going to put major breach on them, and then tarnished puts minor breach on them. So you've got major minor breach on the target. Not only are you going to deal more damage to that target, but everybody around is now going to be dealing more damage to that target. So these people that are running around are really tanky build, like, yeah, look at me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're going to respawn. All right, let's take a look at our champion tree for the blue tree. We have weapon expert. It's going to increase your damage done with light and heavy attacks by a total of 20%. Thermagers is going to increase your damage done with damage over time effects by a total of 6%. Wrathful strikes is 205 weapon and spell damage. Untamed Aggression is an additional 150 weapon and spell damage. For the Red Tree, we have Celerity, increases your movement speed by a total of 10%. Strategic Reserve gives you 30 health recovery for every 10 ultimate you have. Fortified is 1731 armor, balanced vitality, 1400 health. For the Green Tree, we have Rationer, it's going to increase your duration of your food and drink bus by a total of 30 minutes. Liquid Efficiency gives you 10% chance to not consume a potion whenever you use it. Gifted Rider gives you another 10% mount speed. Steed's Blessing is going to increase your out of combat movement speed by a total of 20%. Alright, let's talk about your lineup for your burst combo. You want to start first with the Elemental Susceptibility, Living Dark, throw your Comet, chuck your Spear, and then execute behind it. So it should look something like this. And by the time all of that goes off on somebody, they, you're going to just nuke them. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I got some game footage I'm going to put at the end of this video. If y'all want to hang out and take a look at it, appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. I'll try to get back to y'all with another video. Later.
Yeah, they're probably doing the, the whole... I don't know. ...being used there. Survive that guy. I don't care how tanky you are. I so said, at least we got the wall open, you know? Just for good measure. Oh, there's another blue. 
What are you doing, guy? Trying to mount up the whole time, but I end up getting ran down. Okay. okay, we'll at least get here. Oh, I'm dead. No, I live. What? That's crazy.